Okay. Rest in the Lord. Psalms 37, 7. Let's turn there. Verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. I don't know about you, but that's um, probably one of the most... Um, Blessed and also annoying scriptures. Because trusting in the Lord and um, resting in Him all sounds wonderful, but wait patiently. Well, we'll be patient, Lord, but we don't want to wait. They've they, they got to go together. Mm-hmm. Um, waiting patiently doesn't necessarily just mean, oh, okay, nothing to do, just sit there. It doesn't mean that. It can be very active, actually, or it can be sitting. It's, it's, it's uh, waiting on somebody, and in this case is waiting on God for the directions. And it just may be, look, you need to have a season of resting. It might, might be you need to go and play cards and just relax and get yourself off your mind for one. Don't be so um, stiff. It may be you need to go to Canberra and honk your horn. <laughs> may need you, it may mean you need to be not so lazy and get out and work. If you've got no money, you're broke, work more, get another job or something. It could mean anything. Because we're not the ones working it out. We're the ones waiting and he's giving the instruction. It's waiting on him for the direction. And there's so many gifts, there's so many callings, is that we can't work out God. We can just get to fathom part of his nature by looking at all of his creation. If you look at the human race... If you look at all the races, all the personalities, all the different people, all the gifts, callings, um, you'll start to see the character of the nature of God so multifaceted. But if you try to follow any, if you try to be like any, you're going to trip up because you'll, you'll lose your own calling and destiny. You can, you can learn from everybody, but you can't be anybody. You can only be you. So we have to get instructions from the Lord. Now that could come in many different ways through other people. It can come through situations, circumstances. Sometimes it can come through our nature or... Um, the creation around us can come from you're sitting outside looking at a full moon coming up and the Lord speaks just some beautiful loving thing to you or you just feel his love and his warmth. It could be the cry of a child. Innumerable ways God can speak to us and reveal himself to us. Of course, we know we have his word. We've been talking about that. And the Holy Spirit is living and dwelling in us. We tap in and we learn and discern him and we flow with him and hear his voice. But God is not limited. And God is way, way beyond the bounds of our own restrictive thinking. We have to break out of that and let God be God. Amen? And if the Holy Spirit, when He was moving through, oh, it, it was through, oh, I can't remember which country, Europe, somewhere over there, and the Holy Spirit in the time of the revival, Hebrides revival, where was that from? Anyone remember? remember? Which one? Hebrides. Hebrides? Anyway, He was called the wild goose. The Holy Spirit was so wild. The goose just get up there, honk, honk, honk. You ever seen the goose flying? And the lead honks and all the ones honk behind and cheer him on. And when, then the, when the front one almost loses his honk, honk, he flies to the back and comes in behind, gets in the, the jet stream, and the front one honks the latest. And they all honk behind and encourage the front one. Honkers. Mm. And the Holy Spirit was named in that revival because he was, he was so wild, you never knew what he was going to do. And he was so exciting and so thrilling. He'd wait on God and he would just show up in different ways that they called him a wild goose. He was noisy, he was passionate, and he just rose up in people and they just, you just, um, you can't frame God. We've got to stop trying to frame God. But we all have. And it's just part of the unrenewed mind. But as you get your mind renewed by the Spirit of God, as you tap in, as you start to get open-minded through humility... Pride will just cut you off from anything. Trying to, you know, you just got to humble yourself and recognize God, your God, and just wait on Him and, and expect anything. Some people have been so passionately hungry in love with God they sneak off in the night and go into the ocean and stand out there with the water up to their neck and just worship God all night. Some have been known to do it in time past in freezing waters, and it's been a sign of wonder. Others, because they they don't they want to be left alone with God, they go out into the deep and they just worship God and wait on Him in the freezing. Humanly impossible. They'd freeze out there. One of the revivalists, I think it was Finney, hit up a log in the bush just to be alone with the Creator. 
I mean, I don't think I'd enjoy that much with the termites in there. You know? What else is going to come in here at night time? What's that noise? <laughs> different things for different folks, right? I like to walk on the road and not out in the bush because I might get a, a tick, but I'll stay on the road and I'll walk on the edge. You know, I'm a road hiker. <laughs> and if it's a bush walk, I like that to be fairly, you know, fairly walked so that, um, you know, there's less chance of getting all those little nasties. But some people, it's something totally different. They've got to get way out there where no one is. For some, they, they hear from God in the midst of crowds. For some, it's on the beach. For some, it's out in the water. For some, it's on the mountaintop. For some, it's in the valley. For some, it's on the lake. For some, it's in the house. For some, it's out with the birds. For some, it's just looking, getting amongst the flowers and smelling. L- listen, God is so great. He's so awesome that you can find a creator wherever you are in your situation. As you purpose in your heart to start waiting on Him, He's going to show up. Because you've been sent to the earth in love. You've been sent with a purpose and with a calling and with a destiny. And it's no mistake you're here now. It's no mistake you've had the life you've had um, to bring you to this place. And for some it's, you know, change course. You've maybe got off on course or the enemy's tried to take you out. But God can fix it. God can fix anything. (laughs) Hallelujah. It's God we're talking about. So rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for Him. Patient is consistently wait. It doesn't necessarily mean a long time, even though it can be like, Okay, so we know that was it was it January sixth year before this one, which is like um just over a year a month, like it's thirty months or something. We saw the big um the big the big light in America, right? So many got very discouraged. Me one at that time, my discouragement only lasted like a, maybe a few hours or a day or two because I just um you stay close to God, you can't stay discouraged for long. But for some, it almost ruined them, and for some to this day, they don't go back. They're not bad people. It just hit them that hard. And others are saying, how long, Lord, how long? Everyone saw what happened. Most. Some are in denial. But most deep down know it was a takeover. When, is, when are you going to do the, When are you going to bring justice, Lord? When are you going to do something about this? Some just got bitter at God. That's fine. God's not angry about it. We might get angry at him. God's not angry at him. He understands everyone's heart, where they're coming from, why they think the way they think. There are many that know full well what they're doing, that did the takeover, and are happy about it. And um, don't worry, God will fix them. But through this whole period, it's been a time to awaken, time to position, time to wait on God, time to find your true self, true purpose, and it's not too late. There's still time because it's still the season of it. But it's going to come to an end soon. The Lord told me just recently, it's, I, was, I know that there's time of reaping. There's, there's a time of a harvest of souls. But before that, there'll come a time of reaping of money. The great financial um, ingathering will come. And these globalists that have held the money and kept people in bondage and suppressed the poor, it's going to be uh, flipped over. It's going to come to us. So we know that time's coming. But there's, there's um, lost my train of thought. There's a time coming. But we know that um, how long, how long, Lord? We have to still go through the motions because there needs people still waking up. And there's still things that need setting up in place. But God's mainly working in people, even though it looks outward, because we tend to, in this world, we tend to look outwardly. But He's working in people. That's why we're starting to see the outward change starting to happen. And where did these masses of people come from? How did they organize this? They didn't organize it. Oh, they might have had people trying to organize things, but look, you can't do that. You can't organise a 160 mile, what's that in case? 200 k long, uh, bumper to bumper, truck. 270. It's grown. Mm. Mm. How can you do that? Mm. That can't be done. In the snow too. Mm. And everyone's out in the snow cheering them, on the bridge cheering them, in the cold, in the snow. It should be freezing, but they're not that happy. <laughs> no man can organise this, even if you've got a committee. That, even the committee would be anointed. You just can't do that. See? So the outlook is starting to display what God's been doing. He's been working in us. He's been doing a great work these last 12, 13 months. He's been doing an awesome work. But when it flips, it could be sudden. Many think it could happen in a day. And of course, the mess could take years to clean up. Now, there's going to be change happening for decades and prosperity. This whole world's going to be just changed and transformed. But a, a day where the whole world may see what's going on, what's happened, and, and it'll be flipped. But that's just a, that's just a theory. 
That's just what I'm thinking. It's, something's going to happen really far, really uh, suddenly. But that's still up to the Lord, isn't it? We just rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way. We've been stolen and robbed from. You know, I work and I've got a good income, but I, I've got to pay 47% tax. I don't complain about it. I want a good attitude. But I know that they're stealing from me. Yeah. It's not right. Yeah, maybe they're 5 10% or something to help them out. It's more than enough. But they put, they put billions into underground cities, underground tunnels, nefarious networking across the nations, between nations, underneath the oceans. You would be surprised where billions and billions and trillions of our money has gone. Even the killing of innocent babies, even evil research for the um, wicked agendas. It's all going to be fixed. Hallelujah. The report's out, are out. It's leaking. Bits leak out. Because people just get too excited, they can't hold it in any longer. It leaks out. There's leaks that tens of thousands of children have been rescued through this period. Tens of thousands of them. Hallelujah. The news media put on there about a child that gets lost somewhere. And it could be. And it takes, it takes all the news media sites and, and draws the attention of everyone for a week or two. There are thousands lost. See, the media is a smokescreen. But the media, when it's taken over, the truth will come out. Which may seem to some at the moment a lie, but more and more awakening to it. And when it does flip over, it won't be accepted by everybody, but eventually, eventually they will. Because um, it'll just, it'll just um, have the same effect. It'll eventually reprogram. Just like the programming has taken place by the evil ones, the reprogramming will happen by the Lord. It could take some time. So the flipping may be instant, but the reprogramming could take, it could take an actual, a whole generation. So we've got to be patient. Amen? And you've got to be patient with yourself too. It's a process. There's a learning process. Wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. See, you're saying, don't worry about all that now. Work on yourself. Deal with all these attitudes now. Don't fret. It only causes harm to who? To you. You get all worried and stressed out. No, I've got a piece of their mind. I'll wring their neck. Well, okay. We don't like to wring their neck, but you get yourself worked up. And you're going to get stressed out. And give yourself cramps. Or whatever, stomach ulcers. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Hallelujah. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look diligently for his place, but it shall be no more. There's coming a time soon where you won't be able to find the wicked. Where are they? Where have they all gone? They've vanished. They've been taken away. Amen? They've been taken away. You know? So much going on out there. You know, I know so little. I, I, I know most of what I know by the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, I know nothing. Because I don't even look anymore. I mean, I've seen it all. Someone comes up with some more news. And I think, oh, that's the same as six months back. Just a different twist. Um, <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Someone called to it. But, you know, I'll, I'll just keep waiting on the Lord and uh, do it in a certain way that God has for me to do it. But I always hear, always seem to know what's going on anyway because someone tells me or God will show me something. We have to find our place. And for many, it's, a, it's in Canberra. And so we're going to cheer them on, amen? But because of guilt, don't think you need to be there. If you're prompted and led by the Spirit of God, get down there. If you're not just because you feel as though, well, I'm not doing my part, I'm just a lazy but no, 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 do your part here. You know? Your part might be up a log in the bush <laughs> during this period. Not my, Not me. All, I'm just saying that just to, just to open your minds up, that's all. Is let's be open-minded. Let's not be condemned. Because remember, many of these people are desperate. There's nothing left for them. In their mind, for some of them, life's finished. If we don't win this now, if we don't do it, we do something, not realising the Spirit of God <laughs> breathing it and pushing it along. But to many, this is, this is life and death now. You know? To some, if we don't win this, we... We're finished. But they're not finished. Hallelujah. Psalm 21. Don't you love the Psalms? Hallelujah. Psalm 21. Verse 1. 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 Psalm 21.
Psalm 23, uh, 21, 6. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. We've got to get that hope built up in us again. Hey, don't worry about it. God's goodness and mercy is there trialling along. You know, we've got this. We're going we're to win. We're not just going to win, we're going to really win. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters, verse 2. Um, waiting upon the Lord is going to put you in a position where God is really getting involved. I'm just flitting around Psalm 23. <laughs> oh, did I? Oh, yeah. Oh, 21, verse 6. Let's go back to that one then. <laughs> For you have made him most blessed forever. You have made him exceedingly glad with your presence. In the presence of Lord's fullness of joy. I think it was another translation there. I need to read that. Psalm 21 verse 6. Let's have a look. The, the, um, Psalm 21 verse 6. Now the message says you pile blessings on him. You make him glad when you smile. Imagine getting buried under the blessings of God. And you can barely <laughs> breathe. God, hey, cut back on these blessings a bit. That's actually the richness of God. Um, New Living says, You've given him the joy of your presence. The passion said, What joy and bliss. He tastes rejoicing before your face. See, your victory heaps blessing after blessing upon him. The Lord's victory is going to heap so many blessings on us that all that has been lost will be restored. The restoration of all things is at hand. That's why we've been encouraging people, please don't you know, quit. You know, if someone puts you off in your job or something, well, it's not right, it might not be just, but you know, let that happen rather than leave yourself of your own will because then there's no, um, there's no recoil. You can't say, oh, well, I was unjustly put off. But if you're put off, there'll be repayment. God's going to repay. If it's not in that way, it'll be in some way. And the blessings will, will be heaped upon us so much. And, um, you know, like Melina studying law, there, there's, um, there's juries going everywhere. And, and when payment comes, when payday comes, it's going to come, isn't it? Yeah. And they were rejoicing, but also um, weeping. So what can we do while all this is going on? Do our part if you call to that, like Melina studying. And thank God, you know, God's raising up people all around the world with a heart for justice. But that should be in every person's heart as a believer for justice. True justice, True justice that's right. Not worldly justice. And, but to get it right, to hone it in, we need to dive into the Word of God. We need to get the right attitude and trust that God will do it and He'll guide and He'll use the gifts in the judges, in the lawyers, all the people that are looking into these things. will have the true gift of discernment and the heart of compassion as well. God, All God's Justices are with compassion. When the hammer falls, it will also be with compassion. But the wicked will be shivering in their shoes. Uh, because the, the verdict, when they come, it's final. And there's no running. There's also a lot of leaked reports. Get now that many that haven't been seen for some time are already gone. They've already been wiped away. We've just got to wait for the Lord. All will be made known in time. Hallelujah. We trust in the Lord. He is the one to be, to be feared. He's the living God, the creator God. And we love Him so. And we trust the Lord with all our heart. And we lean not to our own understanding. But in all our ways we acknowledge Him. Just acknowledge God. Just, just know He's involved. And He will direct our pathways. He'll direct the pathways. Amen. He'll lead and guide us. If you've, if you've been down some wrong paths, let's not be condemned or self-condemned. The devil will, will help you. If you get condemned, he will really make you condemned. <laughs> let's just say, Lord, okay, Lord, uh, okay, I need to get back on the right path and just get the forgiveness, just get washed in the blood of Jesus and just start waiting on him. He'll just take you. He'll just take you from right where you are. He'll take you back to that place. If you've gotten behind, he has the way of transporting you to that place where you should be quickly. You know, man's mind means, oh, you better pay penance and you better suffer for another year or two because of all the dirty things. No, no, God will say, right, you cleaned up. I'll whisk you to where you should be and we'll go on from where you would have been if you had obeyed there. See, the mercy? See? All God wants is victory here. He just wants victory. 
and He wants us to be positioned. We've been sent to the earth for a purpose. Not, we haven't been sent here to fail. We've been sent here to win. Amen? And God's raising up winners. Hallelujah. You know? And um, like just even in my workplace. You know? Why am I a pastor and working? I'm happy to be because the Lord has, has told me. But in the other days, I felt good about it but then, until someone condemned me that um, we well, mustn't be a real pastor. And then, then that was bad enough because I'm working. And then number two is uh, how many are in your church? Oh, oh well. You're just one of those you know, pretend ones. You've got to be one or the other. You just can't work and be one and one. Well, Paul, well, Paul did. Yeah, oh, many things have been said over the years. And thought, you sometimes feel the thoughts more than anything. I don't, I'm not bothered by it. But I had to learn through all those experiences. And one day God broke through all of it all when I was trying to find my place. And he said, you can't compare yourself to any other pastor in the whole world. You can learn from them all because they've all got similarities because they're pastors. They're going to shepherd people or situations or families or even, even people will be called the shepherd nations. Apparently there's two getting raised up in Australia husband and wife team that are going to have a mother and father spirit to bring healing to the land. Just a couple. Just two. Yeah? And prophets have been saying it. Wouldn't that be amazing? Amen. Amen. Imagine if it was us. It's not. I'm just saying, imagine that. Here, God, I'm thinking, Jesus, you better do a start. Hurry up, do a quick work here. But now God's been working on a couple. Amen. He knows who they are. And they're going to come forth and God's going to do some amazing things. And they'll be, they'll be like, like, um, like parents. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. It's just, it's just amazing what God is doing, what he's up to. And the Lord had to break through and say that to me. So over a period of time, I had to find my place in him by waiting on him. And you'll have to find your place in him waiting on him, no matter what your endeavor is, what it is you're doing. Even just to be a mum. You know, even just to be a grandparent even. Just wait on him and just receive your instructions. Receive the grace and, and be the grandmum, be the granddad that you're called to be. You know, one day our grandchildren are going to have children, and then we're going to have to learn how to be a great grandparent. <laughs> you know, it seems to be a bit of a crash course now, just being a grandparent. Yeah. And then there's more. And then when the great great come, then there's a, then there's a whole tribe starting to gather. How on earth we're supposed to? Grace will be there for every season. Amen. Can you imagine if you felt the calling, and I'm sure this couple uh, sense something, but uh, they probably don't know the magnitude. But the nation will look up to them. Yeah. I just feel so excited about it. Because this world is, is suffering with, with not enough parents. Yeah. Not enough true mothers and fathers that are just strong and good, good morals. I think President Trump is one. Yeah. And Melania. Many looked up to them. You know? And um, when they're restored, that's going to be a happy day for America. But it's a happy day for the world because they just, they just love their tenacity and their dogness, determination. And even though there's sharpness and stuff, people don't mind that. Some do. The devil hates it. Because they're real. They're themselves. You can't stand that. When you're yourself, you'll take people off everywhere just being yourself. Don't worry about it. Because if you're yourself, there's no one else like you, see. But if you conform to everyone else, well, you'll fit in like a chameleon. But you just start just being happy in who you are. And just, some will get angry just at your happiness. I don't know why. It's really weird. You can be too happy. Folks will get offended at your joy. You're too free. What do you love now? Anyway, dive into the word of God. Rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him. He will handle the wicked. He'll deal with them and he'll set you up and we'll have the victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus.